Today, I'm going to show you how to go from this lame old RS cluster to this STI GD cluster. How's it going, guys? I'm Dakota. This is Flatland Detonation. It is currently negative 20 degrees outside, so I'm gonna do something inside that I've always wanted to do. There's no videos that I can really find that are really detailed on how to do this, so I figured I'd help you all out. What I'm trying to do is fit a newer STI cluster into an older GC style dash. Obviously there's pretty big differences between the two uh, just physically. You can get them to fit pretty well. You'll have to modify a few things on your GC model or GM6, whatever you refer to your uh, earlier Imprezas in your country. The biggest issues with fitting one of these in an early model dash is the plastic actually comes down over the tack a little bit, so you have to heat that and bend it up. And there's also little gaps on the sides of the cluster. You'll have to do some kind of fiberglass work and fill it in. I plan on doing all that. I'll do a video on that later. First, I'm just going to figure out all this wiring, make sure it works and be as detailed as possible as I can for you guys. There is a write up out there already. I'll link this below. It basically runs you through each connector and in the pins in each connector and what they do. And it also shows you on the newer model, the same correlating pins that you'll need to connect together. So if you're confused, this is A, B, and C. These are the plugs, and in each plug, there is a wire. Each wire is referred to as a pinout. If we look at the early model cluster, and we look at the plug, each of these pinouts is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can count uh, 10. <laughs> uh, there's 10 pins in here in total. And each one of these pins does something. So for instance, on this folder cluster, A5 is your ABS light. A8 is your fuel light. And I've gone through and labeled all of these. so. What I'm going to do instead of just cutting these and soldering them or butt connecting them in, I'm going to depin the wires out and repin them into the STI plugs. It's pretty easy to depin connectors. So for instance, I have this one apart already. What you're depinning is just the little plug that goes in there. You'll need to pop the clips off of the ends you'll have to shove something down into the into the connector to actually pop this piece out i like to steal my girlfriend's bobby pins file them down and those work pretty well to just get them out otherwise uh there's like two dollar harbor freight pick sets i have one of those but it's outside and it's way too cold and i don't want to go outside to get it but yeah that's how you take the actual pins apart that's what i plan to do just in case i mess something up i don't have to just cut and resolder something i can just de-pin it and pin it back into the correct location provided i don't uh, light something on fire or burn up a connector or one of these clusters i started to go through and label the connectors on here just so i know what that location does so i can pull it out pull the correlating wire out of this one and then pin it back in. Uh, I was reading this wiring diagram wrong and I actually labeled everything backwards. It gets, it gets kind of confusing. So for instance, on the B plug, on the older model, number one starts here. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, jumps back to the top, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and did I count it right? Yep, 15 and 16 is just empty there. So you'll have to know that. I'll link these wiring diagrams below. You'll need to use both of these just to double check your work. I know some of the STI clusters are different. For instance, 04 is a little different from the newer ones. I honestly don't know the exact differences, so just be aware, use your wiring diagrams to 
pay attention to what the each pinout does in each plug. I'll give you some examples here. So for instance, C14 is your oil pressure switch, so your oil light. If we jump over and go top row, oil pressure light is in the 14th location there. So again, it starts on the bottom, jumps back to the top and then 14. So you'll need to know that. I made a mistake. I was looking at the plugs backwards on this side. On this one, the plugs actually are pretty detailed on where the little tabs are. So I'm gonna go back through, relabel this so I don't confuse the crap out of myself. And then I can depin all of these like I've done with uh, this test subject here. And then I can pin them back into the correct locations on the STI plug. Just got through depinning one of the plugs. So as you can see, no more pins in there. Just had to pop this off, jam a bobby pin in there, and these all pulled out. So they're all labeled. And then once I figure out which plugs that each of these go in, I'll start jamming those in there as soon as I get these wires figured out. All right, guys, after pulling my hair out because I had the wrong pinouts, we have a working STI GD cluster and a GC8 2.5 RS. Tack works. Shift light even works. I've got it set to two grand right now. I don't know if that is going off of the inside temperature of the car. Yes, it's actually that cold out right now, but that seems to be working, which is really surprising. I have the lights on, uh, showing the lights are working. If I turn the lights off, the green light goes off, turn the lights back on. So let's put the car in gear. I've got it up on jack stands right now. I'll put it in second and get some good speed going. due to how low the needle is in this cluster is what I kind of figured out. Uh, you can't really wire in the, the warning light that actually is in this car. This is definitely one of those you don't need to do mods, but personally I think the 2001 cluster with the white background is really ricey, but I'm not a fan. I love how big this tachometer is on here, so when I'm on track I can actually see how many RPMs the car is at, um, everything's just bigger and it's it's a lot easier to see. You'll notice that it's it's sitting in there really badly. Uh, this It's a really tight fit, guys. So if you plan on doing this, uh, be prepared to, to struggle around with it. This bezel is gonna have to get modified. In the corners, you're gonna see gaps and the upper part has to be heated and pushed up. Otherwise, the top portion of your tachometer will actually get cut off a little bit. I plan on doing that when I do these. I'm going to delete these vents right here and put in gauges because honestly, when you got your Starbucks in there and uh, you heat your heats on and you got iced coffee, you know, it, it really ruins your day because it wrecks your coffee. So I'm gonna put some gauges in here. Um, I'm not a fan of the big uh, hood scoop three pod pillar thing up there. Not a fan, I just, I just don't like ricey looking stuff. So I'm gonna pull this cluster out, I'm gonna take it inside. I'm gonna show you which pins actually go where onto the STI cluster because the write-up that's on Nasiac and 2.5 RS is completely wrong, at least it was for me. And I couldn't get my cluster to actually turn on because they had the wrong ground wire listed. So. Let's pull this out, going where it's warm, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're back inside where it's not freezing, and I'm going to painlessly show you what pin goes where, does what, 
what wiring diagrams I used. I was trying to fit this into the car, ended up breaking some of it. Again, guys, if you're gonna do this, it is uh, it is a very tight fit. I'm probably gonna do another video on how to fit this thing into the car because it's, it's a tight fit. I cut the bottom tabs. I broke all these off of the actual top mount. Um, everything I've seen online, everyone takes this one off. I'd like to keep this one just because I track my car a lot and I don't want this thing rattling around in there or making any noise or anything dumb like that. But let's go through each pin here. Uh, if you've stuck along through the video to this point, I'm assuming you want to do this in your own car and you were probably like me and you uh, either didn't know what pins went where or even how to really read these uh, pin outs here. So we're gonna flip the cluster around. My desk is a mess here. And if we go through, so again, this is plug A, plug B, plug C. You can kinda see I labeled them, it's worn off because I've touched them so much. And if we go through, and if, if you guys want this pinout here and all the pinout diagrams, I'll have this on my Facebook and my Instagram. So if you guys need to refer back to this, there's more than one way to actually wire this thing. This cluster will power on based off of one ground. As you can see, I used C13 from the RS side. Um, they had it listed as a turn signal ground on the instructions and this thing was just doing all sorts of weird things it was flashing on and off um, so i just used one ground the coolant ground so c no sorry a10 from the rs side you actually don't use anymore because this cluster uses one ground and the circuit board directs what it needs to do. I don't, there's probably a technical term for it, but I am no wiring expert. So, all right, going back into the painless labeling of everything. So looking at A plug here, A1 starts at the bottom. Let's zoom in there. A123, the brown and white label is A8 off the RS side. That's your fuel light your fuel gauge, I should say. Four, five, six, seven is your check engine, which is C18 off the RS side. Eight, nine, turn signal. 10, 11 is your coolant gauge. Again, you don't use your coolant ground anymore, which was A10 off the RS side. This is internally grounded now, so you only need A9 from the RS side to power that. Moving on to plug B, which there's quite a bit more, quite a bit more wires in here. I'm gonna try to move all these out of the way so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, starting at the bottom. B1 is C17 off the RS cluster. That is going to be your charge light indicator. So if your alternator wasn't working or your battery sucks or something like that. B2 is your oil light and that is C14 off the RS side. B3 is your A5 off the RS side and that is your ABS. So one thing to know about ABS, when I plug this in, the ABS light goes off on this cluster but it's actually reverse polarity on the STI versus the RS. So if my ABS was working correctly in my car, the ABS light would actually be on. So you, you'll have to figure out how to flip the polarity on that if you want that to work properly. Moving on to B4. So B4 is actually the rear diff light. And I just wired that into the ground for the cluster. So you can see right here, it's wired in. I just did a mechanical connection, wired it around, heat shrinked it so the wire wasn't exposed. B9 is your B7 plug off the RS side. And that is the seatbelt warning light. I'm not sure if that actually worked. B13, the blue wire here is going to be the vehicle speed sensor, which is B5 off the RS side. The next plug is B6, 
That is your door warning light. Sorry if this is kind of blurry, guys. This GoPro isn't the best for filming. B18 is going to be your B14 off the RS side. And that is your airbag. The next plug is parking brake. I'm not sure if that's working or not on mine. Um, I'm having an issue even with the stock cluster in. My my brake light doesn't come on when I pull the e-brake, so I have to figure out where there's where there's a short or something in the system. B19, where the red wire is going into, is your C2 off the RS side. That is your high beam light, so when you switch it on, that green light comes on. And the next plug is your headlight, so again, it just switches that green light on. Moving on to C connector. This is where I had issues and I couldn't get my cluster to actually turn on. So, starting on C. C12 is your C10 connector. That again is labeled vehicle speed sensor. I'm not sure. There was two, two listed on this wiring diagram for vehicle speed sensor. This one worked for me. So again, maybe something you have to mess around with, but that's C10 into C2. C3 is again, your turn signal. There is a difference between the turn signals here. So this is the right side and that is B15 off the RS cluster. C5 is your C9 off the RS side, and that's your tachometer. C6 is your, that is your ground. So I use the turn signal ground, which is C13 off the RS side. You could probably use, use the coolant ground too for this. Uh, this is just work, this is just what worked for me. C7, that is your ignition power which is c7 on the rs side so coincidentally they correspond with each other c8 is your 12 volt ignition as well and then c10 is your c8 off the rs side and that is your 12 volt constant i hope that helped you guys out sorry if it's really blurry and you can't really tell but again, I'll have this on my Instagram and Facebook along with this. This wiring, this wiring diagram here helped me out a ton more on figuring everything out. The actual Subaru wiring diagrams are really difficult to read. I thought I just didn't know what I was doing until I reached out to some friends and they're like, no, use this one because it's way easier to read. Uh, when I go to fit this guy in the car, I'll do a video on that. I'm also going to make my own gauge pod cluster. I've got this old brown one that I'm using right now to just kind of mock everything up. I don't like the huge hood scoop style like I like I said earlier. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something out of this. This is why I do the videos. Definitely have way more to do on the RS. Uh, I'm starting to order parts for my Datsun. So if you wanna see more videos on that, make sure to like and subscribe. But I appreciate you guys watching and I really hope you learned something. So see you guys next time.